Welcome back to my channel. We are live tonight with my model Katie. Hi. For those of you guys that are new, every Thursday night I live stream a makeover so you can see everything I do start to finish without anything edit out. So today we're going to do kind of like a natural glam on Katie. She has super, super pretty like blue green eyes. Mm -hmm. What would you say they were? Would you yeah, say they green. were green or more mm -hmm. blue? The little blue flecks in them. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to show you guys my very favorite colors to use to make those eyes pop. So we're going to start with Soft Brown by MAC. And this one's pretty. It's like a warm shadow. It has kind of a golden undertone mixed with a little bit of pink. So the pink to me, like when it has like just like a hint of like red in it, I feel like it makes those little blue flecks pop that she has. And then anything gold and pink will definitely make your greens pop. you've ever looked at like a color wheel you always they say to like do the opposite so the opposite of green is red so if your shadow has like a little bit of pink or like a reddish coppery brown it'll totally make those greens pop the warmer colors in general are just flattering on pretty much everybody cool colors can be really flattering too but you have to be a little bit more careful with them because they tend to look more muddy or if you use like the wrong color cool for your skin tone you can look bruised because usually when you have like a black eye or something if you think about it it's like a, a purple or a blue or like a cool tone so don't want to mimic that with makeup what colors do you usually wear Katie I, I love like the shimmery golds. I love shimmery golds. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, your browns and things like that. I'm pretty basic. Yeah. I love those colors though. Mm -hmm. Cause I feel like you can do your eyeshadow different ways or do different combos and use those neutral colors and still have it look like fun and different. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't use a lot of dark. I don't do like the dark eyeliner. I'll put brown mm -hmm. or something with like shadow. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, I do brown a lot. Like, I love brown gel liner because I feel like it makes the eyes pop, but it doesn't look too harsh. Right, right. right. So this is Texture. This is also by MAC. When you look at it in the pan, it has a little bit of a sheen, like a shimmer, but it's, it's more matte to me when you put it on the eye. When I do the crease colors, I always like to do matte, generally, almost always. How come? I just feel like, because that's your transition color, it looks more natural. Like, I almost want the crease to be more of a shadow, and then mm. I like my pop of shine to be on the lid. Oh, okay. I feel like it looks a little more classic and, like, professional that way. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if you have shimmer there, like, everybody has texture in their eyes there, because that's where we, like, open and close, and sometimes the shimmer will sit on it. Oh, here. okay. And so if you're matte, it's just, like, a wash of color. Okay. And then this part's usually more flat. That makes sense. It gives kind of that doe eyed look too. Like if this is shiny and glittery, it kind of gives you like those big, pretty, like bright eyes. Oh, I love that. But if like up above is glittery, sometimes it's just kind of like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> it can be pretty. Mm -hmm. I've seen it done and I like it, but it's like harder to do, especially for everyday makeup. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. I feel like for my everyday makeup, like I love to sit and spend time on my makeup. It's fun. But if I want to get ready in like 10 minutes, I'm not going to do anything like risky. Like I'm not right, going like, to shimmer in right. places that needs to be like perfectly applied. I'm going to like go save. Right. Okay. So if you look at the camera, go ahead and close again for me. So even these colors on her, like they're pretty light. Like the first one's like a light brown. The second one's a medium brown. Go ahead and open again. Like that's enough for her eyes. If we did liner and lashes, like this would be the perfect everyday look. I'd probably do a shimmer on her lid or something, but those are enough. I am going to add a little bit of a darker color just so you guys can see. And just because on camera, sometimes the light colors don't pop as much. So I'm going to add a little bit more, but this is like... If you're looking for a super quick daily look, this is perfect. Okay, let's do, this one's super pretty. I don't use this one too much. This one's antiqued by MAC, and this one does have a shimmer. So I'm gonna keep this one really low. I'm gonna go in with kind of a more dense brush. These are like my favorite brushes, the little like fluffy blending ones. I think it's the 217 by MAC. And I've literally, like, they last forever, like, MAC brushes. I don't know if they still are, but they used to be, like, handmade. And they will last you forever. But I feel like mine are getting, like, a little bit scratchy now. So 
if anyone watching, if you have good tips, like if I should condition them or something, because I don't want to get rid of them. They're still awesome. <laughs> I love my MAC brushes too. They're so good. They switched over. So they used to all be like animal hair, like really high quality mm -hmm. animal hair, the MAC brushes, and now they went synthetic. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, which is awesome. But they do feel like a little bit different. I haven't bought this one again, but there's a flat one I'll use on you that I really like. And that one's synthetic and it doesn't pick up product exactly the same. Mm -hmm. But I still like it. There's like, I have like all different brands. Like, have you heard of Morphe? No. It's like a, people really like them. It's really trendy and they have like less expensive stuff. So if I want like, 10 of these brushes for doing like a bridal party or something mm -hmm. and I have some of their brushes and they work really good at first but like they'll fall apart but they're only like um, five bucks so it's like you okay can well more, yeah but yeah that so makes up for it yeah so it's like good and bad but the mac ones like forever like i don't know how much these are like 35 but like for a lifetime you will like have that brush yes okay now i'm going to do i want to do gold on her Hang on one second. Can I grab this palette? Okay, so this is the Soft Glam. This is the Anastasia palette, and they have this color called Glistening, and it's gold, but it almost has like a hint of, I don't know if it's like a little bit of green or a little bit of pink. It kind of has like, it's like a dual chrome color where it will like reflect something different, but it's like a really pale, like champagne-y gold, and it's so pretty. I love this palette. I'm like, like we were talking before, I was telling her like I love my single shadows. Like I'll go by my MAC shadow or my Anastasia shadow and make like a little palette and use that forever. I don't usually use the pre-made palettes too much, but this one I do. This is the the Soft Glam palette. It's really pretty. It's like all the colors I love. Like mm -hmm. it's like your warm browns. It has like a couple gold shimmers. I think there's a black in there. Like you can do so many looks with it. This one's really pretty. It goes well with her skin tone. She has like the warm, kind of bronzy skin undertones. Do you get spray tans? No. You like have the perfect like bronzy skin. Oh, thanks. I love it. Thank you. we go on vacations I always get a spray tan because I'm so pale and I'm like scared of the sun because my dad like he's Irish and he gets like oh yeah little skin spots he'll have to have sure and stuff like mm -hmm. that I'm like okay I'm wearing SPF like 50 right. like a kid do you tend to burn yeah I'll definitely burn and but I can tan. I can tan yeah mm -hmm. like sometimes like I have red in my hair naturally not a lot but like a little bit so uh -huh. sometimes like really fair people just burn and oh like, yeah right it's like mm -hmm. I didn't even like earn anything for right the burn, like right but I will tan, but not much. I don't anymore. Before we got married, I would go to like the tanning bed and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I'll risk it. Like, yeah, prior wedding to look good. Right, right. And I feel right. like I didn't even get that tan. Like, I think I don't tan anymore, so I got a spray tan. <laughs> yeah, the spray tans are the best. <laughs> They're awesome. So I'm doing in the soft glam palette. This is the Cypress Umber. I'll hold that by your face so you can see. So it's like this darkest brown and I'm using that just to define her lash line so I'm not going to do any black shadow on her lid today I am probably going to do like a black gel liner but if you smudge this in right along the lash line especially on the outer corner it gives you a lot of definition and it gives you a lot of pop but it doesn't look too dark like too harsh Especially with light eyes, when you have really light eyes, you can go dark and it's really pretty, but light eyes already contrast a lot with um, with any color that's darker. Like they'll make any dark color look darker than it is, so you don't have to oh, go okay. super that's good dark. To know. They're fun, it's fun to do makeup on light eyes. Mm -hmm. I love my dark eyed clients too, like I love the browns and stuff like that, boy those are fun.
we were bonding over our love of the housewife shows yes. <laughs> before we started. And what's yes. our name? Stephanie from Dallas has like the lightest eyes. Right, and, and Leanne I, too. Yeah, and Leanne mm-hmm. does too. And it's I love seeing like what their makeup artist yeah. does. Yeah, me too. And their little cameos. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Because they, all, I think for the show they do their own makeup. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think like the OC girls, some of, or the Beverly Hills ones, they always get it done before well, that like, makes every sense. day. But I think the Dallas ones do it themselves, but for their kit, like their voiceover, their yeah. diary room, right. whatever they call it, and right. the finale, they always have their makeup done. Right, all the finale is everything. It. It's every- it gives yeah, me like life. they're going to wear. It's my favorite. Me too. I don't care what you're me saying. too. You can watch it on mute. Yeah, that's not I a just problem. Wanna, like, I just want to see what you're wearing. See, yeah. How you got your makeup done? Yeah. I love it. And I, I feel like for their little diary room thing, they'll have like really classic, go ahead and look up for me, makeup. But then when they do the finale, like they'll go, they'll do like smoky eyes. They will. Fun. They'll go really, they get really edgy. Yeah. Cause they wear like evening gowns. So mm-hmm. you can do, you can be like super done up. Mm-hmm. I love it. Me too. I follow like some of their makeup artists on Instagram. It's fun to see. Cause I like too that they do like more mature women. The, those Dallas girls are young, but some of them, like, are older. And I like mm-hmm. to see, like, how they do mm-hmm. makeup. Okay, look, open and look kind of down for me. I'm just going to line your waterline. I'm just going to press liner into your lashes. Did you ever do this? No. It feels weird. I told you really basic. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, that's good. So this just like darkens up the lashes. It makes your eyes pop, but it doesn't look super thick. Like you know, sometimes with light eyes, if you do a thick line of liner all the way around, it just kind of looks like a ring around your eyes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Look over this way towards me. This doesn't. Like this just gives the illusion that you have like the world's thickest lashes, and you're not oh, even wearing liner. Okay. It's weird if you've never had it done that. It's like feels too close uh-huh. for <laughs> comfort. Look kind of over there. Yeah, if you look away from the brush, it helps. Good. Okay, now this other way. Good. And when I get near the tear duct, I like my line to be really skinny. I feel like it gives and makes your eyes pop more. If you make that line too heavy, then it looks more like makeup. If you make it really skinny, it just looks like, whoa, your eyes are pretty. Okay, look kind of this way. Yep. This is a MAC brush, too. It's like their angled. The 266. This one's newer, so I'm rubbed off the number. But I feel like these brushes are totally worth Oh, I love mine. They yeah, really they're are. They're so good. Look over this way. The little blending ones I found, like almost any brand, like I'll love it. Like I have really, really high end, like nice ones, and they do work awesome, but then mm-hmm. like so do my $5 ones. Right. Really close. But like your angled brushes, certain brushes, like you just have to. That you'd have to splurge on that. Yeah. It's worth it. Which ones do you have from them that you like? The one that you're using right now, I have that so one. Good. And then I have a couple of blending brushes. And then they're um, like concealer brushes. I think that's what it's for. See, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. But I have a problem with one of them shedding. Really? Yeah. Which one is it? Like a bigger it's the one? The bigger or? one, right. The oh, bigger bummer. one that. Uh, the concealer one. Yeah. Man, every time. Really? Yeah, it stinks. I spent a lot of money on that. And it always has. Oh, yeah. I wonder if you can say something. Did you get it in a Nordstrom Mac or a, like a... Macy's at the Gardens. I don't know how Macy's is, but the Nordstrom... Anything at Nordstrom, they have like the best return policies. Like, really? Like, them, yeah. I don't, you should, it's worth asking. Like, yeah, like, it like, is. Hey, this is always shed. Like, yeah. Like, they'll exchange it for you. Because that's a bummer. It I feel is. like you got... Look like, this way. Like a fluke one or something. Go ahead and close. Because I feel like when you spend, like... You buy nice brushes, like they usually don't shed, like right. Which was that's what I thought too. So it was kind of shocking when it did. Yeah. I mean, I'll put my concealer on, and then I have to spend a couple minutes picking off all the hairs. Oh, bummer. Yeah, especially if you're using it for cream, because then they're kind of like imprinted on your face. Yeah. Like they're like pushed yeah. in. Right. Yeah. Take it in and see what they say. Okay. I don't know that MAC on its own would be like the best for exchanging, but maybe because it's in like a Macy's, I think they go by there. Okay. It's worth a it's shot. It's worth a shot, yeah, because that's a bummer. That is a bummer. For sure. And they're usually not, like their brushes are usually made really well. Have you used the concealer brush? I don't think so. I don't have like a big paddle 
a bigger powder one. I have like this guy, mm -hmm. but it's like little. I have this one. And this one mm -hmm. doesn't shed, but the sometimes the bigger ones will be more likely to, to shed. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to put on her lashes. If anybody is live, now's a good time to ask questions. I'm going to do, I haven't done these lashes for a while on my channel, but I really like them. When I do clients, I use them a lot. Okay, they're these little dim USBs. They're the Ardells. And I really love these because they look good on everybody. And they are super natural. She has, she has super pretty eyes, and she has like a good eye space, like she's not really hooded, you can kind of see her lid when her eyes are open, but she has like a smaller like space between her lash line and her brows, which a lot of people do, but when you're doing that, you have to watch out for the lash you choose, because if you choose like a really long, thick lash, sometimes it covers up like all the makeup, like all you see is lash, which is, I love, I love the big lash look, but just make sure that's the look you want. So these ones are a little bit shorter. So I'm just gonna let my glue dry for like 10 seconds. Okay. Do you wear strip lashes ever? Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which ones do you like to wear? Uh, whatever the ones I get from MAC. That's where I grab oh, my makeup. I yeah. I've never tried their strip I like, lashes. Um, I've heard they're good mm -hmm. though. I like them. Um, Which ones do you use? Like oh, I can't even remember. Because I don't do it often. If I'm yeah. going somewhere fun and special, You'll then do I'll it. do that. Yeah. Are they more are they pretty thick or like more natural? Like um, down, down close. Good. I have both. But I usually, because if I'm getting my makeup, I usually just go get my makeup done and they do it for me. Right. And then I just have them. So usually it'll be like a bolder look. Yeah. So I'll go a little thicker. Yes. And you can reuse them too. They're probably good lashes. Yes. These ones come in brown too, which my friend Maggie, she's been on my channel before Maggie. Kathy, she showed me them. She's like, I love using them on brides, and they're really pretty. Like for like, if you want to do a really natural day, like the brown lashes are. Super oh really? Pretty. Like I didn't know they kind of came in brown. Yeah, that's neat. I don't think I have any in my thing. I would show you guys. I have them in my drawer. But then, like, if you do brown liner, like a light wash of brown shadow, and then the brown lashes, it's really pretty. It's like nothing's dark on your face, but you look made up. Oh, that's neat. I would like that. Yeah, they're super gorgeous. Most lashes don't. I think only like a couple set. Ardell has like two kinds that come in brown and then sometimes other companies do. Okay, I have a question. Let that dry for a second. You see, sometimes I try to pull up the YouTube link on my phone, but sometimes it doesn't work for me. I might have to take my husband's phone. Those of you don't, that don't know, my husband's awesome and he runs like, he's like my little producer. Like he, he switches behind the camera angles and stuff like that. Hang on, I gotta restart my app. I drop my phone like 50 times a day and I, I think it's like breaking. Like it's like, you know, like it's finally had enough. Yeah. Okay, it's loading. That's playing an ad for me. Okay. I'm gonna let that load while I put this lash on her. Yeah, I like, I want to get a new phone eventually. Mine's still good, but if it breaks, I'm like, oh, I want the new iPhone, but I feel like I'll just break it. Like, right? <laughs> Which one do you have right now? Phone. I have the 7, so it's like, it's a couple generations old, but literally, like, it's good. Like, the only thing I feel like it doesn't have that I would want is the, how the new camera has, like, the portrait mode and stuff like that. Uh-huh. Which one do you have? I have the the X or the ten. Do you love it? I hate it. You hate it? I hate it. Cause it do you hate it because it doesn't have the home button? Well, you know, and I like my home button. Yes, okay. I love my so home button. That took me a minute to get used to. <laughs> yeah. But no, I don't because I had the I don't remember which one it was, but it was like the wider screen. Yeah. And I just love that. I miss it. Aww. But this one just I don't know. My girlfriend has the same one, and she feels the same way. The ex? Mm -hmm. And she doesn't like it? No. Okay, maybe I never want to switch. <laughs> but hey, it's just our opinion. What do we know? We don't know anything. So. <laughs> I love the 7. It's really funny because I actually keep breaking it, and I'll have to take it into the Apple store, and it's always like the day before the warranty, and they're like, oh, here's a new phone. We can't fix yours. And I'm like, 
thank you. Yeah, right? So this is like my third set. <laughs> I'm sure they're refurbished. They're not like purely new. And I don't have phone insurance or anything. I don't know why that happens. I think Apple is just awesome. Probably. But mixing a couple of things because your chest is pretty tan most people mm -hmm. are like that it's like your chest is tan and your face is lighter there we go okay why put this in let's pull up the see if it loaded okay beth jarvis hi beth thank you for watching live she says what lash glue do you suggest using okay i'm going to show you this is my very favorite one this is callus i don't know is it focusing rick front of her face. It's Callus brand, C-A-L-L-A-S, and I just get it from Amazon, and I buy, I buy the pack, like you can get a clear and you can get a black, and I think they're like $8 by themselves, or it's like $12 to get both of them, so I just get both of them, the clear and the black, and I love it because once it dries, it stays super well, like they're not going to lift, which is good, but my favorite thing I love about it is that it dries so fast because like, I, the thing everyone tells me, except for you, is <laughs> that like, I have the hardest time, like, putting lashes on. Like, I want to wear them, but they, like, don't stay. And what I think it is is that people will put it on, like, too soon because you get impatient. And if the glue's not all the way dry, like, it's just a mess. Like, it's not going to stick, and then the, it just never will stick. So I like that this one dries, turned towards me, in, like, 5 to 10 seconds because I kind of just can put it on, wave it, and then pop it on and then it's good like it'll it'll stick to the to the lid because I feel like a lot of people that ask me about lashes I feel like you're probably putting them on right but they're just not really sticking because the glue is not like the right consistency duo glue is awesome too a lot of people like get duo and that's what I used to use so if you have that it is a great glue like I used to use that on my brides before this one you just have to you have to wait like 30 seconds like it's like longer than you think before you put it on so I use, I'll use the clear daily usually just because I'm in a hurry and then if you like make a mistake putting the lash on and it touches your lid, it's totally fine because it's clear if you're using the black one. Um, it's like a little bit harder to get off. I use black on her. And then I use the black like sometimes when I do my strips, I'll add in little cluster lashes on top and I like the black for that. So Oh, that's kind of neat. I didn't know that you can like do that. Yeah, I probably will on you in fact. So I'm going to do I'm going to do your face and then go back and like work on your eyes and I might show you guys how I pop in like extra lashes. That's like kind of my neat. trick for getting like fullness. Like mm -hmm. if I want drama but like I don't know, my style is still like a hint of natural like I like sure. the glam I like right. a lot of makeup but like I don't like too thick and heavy so right. like that's one of my tricks for getting like a lot of lash without being that's really too neat. much so usually when I do foundation I'll go down the neck a little bit too because most people yeah. like our chests are really tan because that's where the sun hits and then our face is more pale because we'll either be awesome and do good skincare and sunscreen or we'll wear foundation that has sunscreen. Mm -hmm. And then our necks are kind of like in between because they'll get like the shadow from our right. face. So usually I'll go down a little bit. And she has fairly dry skin, right? Like yeah. not super dry, but yeah, it, not it's super on the dry, dry side. It, it would, yeah, it's on the dry side. So we exfoliated her before and then I did... Um, Oh, my moisture's over there. I was going to show the camera, but I don't want to lean over you. It is the Murad. I think it's called the Ultimate Moisturizer, and I love that one. Like, I had another makeup artist recommend it to me, and I feel like it really sinks in. Like, do you ever use, like, heavy creams, and you feel like they just sit there? You're like... On top? Oh, yeah. Right, like, and they're not, not penetrating. Right. That one sinks in, so I really like it. And then I did... I can't remember the brand name. I did, um... A primer that's pretty moisturizing and then I did Becca's I put everything over there Becca's backlight primer is so good like it's my new favorite it's that little bottle over there that's like golden oh, okay it has like little little tiny shimmer particles so I put it on under the foundation and your cheeks just look like really glowy but like oh, not I love glowy. that it's my so favorite it's more like dewy mm-hmm oh I like that if you're going like super full coverage with the foundation, like you're just going to cover it up, so it's like no need. But this one's more like a medium to sheer foundation that I'm doing on you, so. Okay. Okay, let's do, this is the tart shape tape. Okay, 
concealer. So I'm just gonna do a thin little layer. So I always like to do, like I'll draw a triangle under the eye, and I usually will go like a shade or a half shade lighter just to brighten that area. Unless someone has like bags under their eyes, which you don't, because if they have, um, bags under their eyes and you go lighter, you just kind of emphasize it. Like it makes more oh, shadow okay. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So if it's ever a day, like some people will like have bags some days and not others. If right. it's like a bag day, like don't go lighter. Okay. <laughs> so, That's good to know. Yeah. You don't, you don't even really have circles or anything either. If someone has like dark circles, which she doesn't, and, um, I need to cover those up before I go lighter. If you go lighter right on top of the dark, it'll just look like bruised, kind of like you uh -huh. can see it show through. So I'll do like an orange color corrector or something. Oh, okay. First. The Urban Decay one's really good because it's really sheer. Like you almost want to kind of stay in the skin and uh -huh. then go over it. You don't want to like put a lot of product. I'm just gonna buff it in with my little makeup sponge. And you know, I didn't know that you had to wet those before you did, like, before you blend. Yeah. Never knew that. You don't have to, but it's, like, they work way better if you do. Right. Do you have one? Yeah, I did, and I just didn't like it. Yeah. But then I learned that, and I thought, oh, okay. It's yeah. probably a rookie move, but. No, you can use them dry. It just doesn't, it doesn't spread as well. I feel like the beauty in it is when they're wet, because then it, like, airbrushes it. Right, but right. When it's dry, it just kind of, like. It is cut to me, like, yeah, and it takes body. it off. Yeah, yeah. Right. You're like, I'm paying for that. Right, I'm but I'm, I'm exactly. I'm like, why do people like these things? <laughs> I don't <Yeah>. understand them. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. so funny. So true. Okay, I'm going to go in. I think we have another question. Let me check, and then I'm going to contour her. Okay, Kelly Ann Roberts has said, do you use anything to set your eyeshadow? Um, to set it, like, after I do it, or to set like prime it before so that it stays all day. Um, let me know if I'm answering it right. So what I did for her eyeshadow is I put on like the MAC paint pot first as a base. I used Painterly on her. I usually use Painterly or Soft Ochre. I feel like those work with the majority of skin tones unless they're very, very deep skin. Sometimes Soft Ochre will still work, but usually I'll do a darker one. So I put that on first and then that makes the shadows look adhere to the to the lid. Like she could sleep in this. I don't recommend it, but she can. And like you'll wake up and your eyes will like stay. Cause it's almost oh, like neat. a spackle. So you put the paint pot on first. It's waterproof, it's oil proof. Especially her eyelids tend to crease. And then I do the shadow on top. But as far as like setting after, sometimes I'll spray like a setting spray on people, but I don't necessarily, like it'll get on the eyes, but I'm not necessarily like setting the eyes. Like it's more the primer than the setting spray for the eyes. Let me know if that answered your question because I might not have understood it correctly. Okay, Patrice. Hi, Patrice. Says, what do you think about false lashes under the lids? I love them. I think they're very, like, oh, under the lids. Do you mean, like, um, bottom lashes or under eyelashes? Bottom eyelashes? I think are super pretty. They're very Kardashian look up. I'm doing a really, really smoky eye look. I'll do the little individuals under, like on the bottom lashes. Um, if you're asking about the top lashes going under the natural lashes, I've seen that online a lot. Like I feel like it's a, a trend, like a beauty hack that's on Facebook and stuff like that, that people are seeing and they say it looks more natural. And it does. Like if you think about it, if you apply the strip under the lashes, they look like your own. But I'm not into it because I feel like it's more dangerous. Like you're more likely to get glue in your eye and it's really hard to do. Like it will take longer. Um, so what I like to do, which I'll show you guys, is either curl the lashes really well first or after. I'm gonna curl hers after. And then apply mascara after I put the strip lash on. I feel like when I do that, it really connects the lashes and the strip together and they're completely seamless which is the goal of putting the lashes or the strip under the lashes, if that makes sense. So I just think it's safer, it's easier, and it ends up looking just as good. Let me know if that answered your question. I'm just all about like 
eye safety. Like I would never want to get like glue in someone's eye or product. Right, right. You know, like you're with your eyes your whole life. Like, mm-hmm. Be nice to them. Maybe it does look a tiny bit more natural or better to have it underneath. But I, I, my personal opinion is I don't think it's worth it. So this is the Too Faced Chocolate Soleil Medium Deep Bronze Tan. It smells like chocolate. It does. I was going to say, <laughs> it smells smell really it? good. <laughs> yeah. It's such a good <laughs> color. Like for my, my tan girls, I love this. It's like the perfect bronzer and contour. So I'm doing under her cheeks and on her forehead. Because it has, like it's like a little bit pink. Like a, a like a little bit cool, but it's it's still warm. It's not like a complete whole tone bronzer so I think that's what makes it work for a contour something if sometimes if something's too orange and I do a contour like you just look like you have orange stripes on your face so I really like this and usually I'll do like a like a powder or something before I go in with my powder contour but because she's dry I don't need to her foundation's gonna stay and I don't want to add like too many layers of powder Okay, Patrice said under the top lashes. So you clarified. That was, I think that was what I was explaining this the second time. So just taking the strip and putting it like under your top lashes, I think that's what you mean. That's that's the thing I think is like maybe not the safest for your eyes. Okay, so now that we have that, I'm going to go in with some blush. I've been using this one a ton. This one's Warm Soul by MAC. It's really pretty. It has shimmer in it, which on dry skin I love. I feel like with dry skin, you don't have as much texture, so you can like go crazy with the shimmers and it will look really pretty. This color is Warm Soul, super pretty with bronzy tones. If you ever do like warm eyeshadows, this is gorgeous. It's also really pretty with red lips, like when I do like my holiday looks on people mm-hmm. and stuff. I, I don't always like like a pink or like a red tinted cheek I feel like it's like too much right I like kind of like a bronzy glow it's really pretty yeah I prefer that too like a red or a pink cheek is looks mm-hmm. a little dramatic yeah too dramatic for me I'm pretty plain so <laughs> sometimes I like it pretty basic it can be really pretty but I felt like a warm soul and a red lip is like super pretty I'm excited for Christmas I'll have to do some holiday holiday looks Thank you guys. For those of you that are watching live, I love having your questions and have you guys join us. Okay, so this is Becca. This is Champagne Pop. Have you ever used their highlighters before? The Becca ones? No. They're really pretty. I never have. This color is super pretty. That looks really pretty. Yeah, it's like a champagne gold. See, all those tones, I like all those colors, I love them. Yeah. I love them too. I'm obsessed with them. Me too. Especially on your skin tone. Like, it's like a little match made in heaven. I oh, good. Cool. Then at least I'm doing something right. You are. You're doing <laughs> all the right stuff. <laughs> and they're safe. Like, like I'm like way pale and you're tan. And they, I feel like I still like those same tones. Sometimes champagne pop is a little too gold for me. Like, when I'm like extra pale. Uh huh. I guess I'm always extra pale. Unless I spray tan. <laughs> That's really I funny. don't change. <laughs> Sometimes I don't like too much gold. I feel like this one works for me. Like this mm-hmm. is as gold as I can go. But I really like they have one called Moonstone and it's just a little more creamy. Like it still has some gold in it because mm-hmm. it's warmth is good, but it, it works better for me. Now with the highlighters, do you prefer the powdered or the liquid? I prefer the powder just because they're easier to build and they're easier to work with. I love the liquids if I have more time. Like if I'm doing like a cream contour on somebody super glowy for like a photo shoot or something, I'll mm-hmm. layer everything. Like I'll do the the cream on top of their foundation and stuff like that. But it's harder to work with because you have to really understand the base. Like sometimes you'll put on a foundation that's like maybe a silicone base mm-hmm. and your highlighter is like a water base, you're cream and you tap it on and then the foundation separates. You can oh, that happen, no. and then it's like, ugh, I gotta redo it. Uh-huh. Or something like sometimes they don't work well, but a powder is like always good. Okay, I'm gonna pop on your lips, and then we'll go back and finish your okay. eyes. So we're gonna do this one. This is Jubilee by Mac. Can you tell I love Mac? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so much stuff. Mm-hmm. I 
feel like they just nail the basics. Like, mm-hmm. my favorite basic eyeshadows are MAC. Like, their lipsticks are really good. I used to use their foundation for clients. I don't anymore. I like more of, like, a, a medium coverage. Their finishing powders are really good. I'll go in and out of using those a lot. Like, the pressed ones like uh-huh. for the foundation. Like, doing a light layer of that over your makeup is nice if you want to be extra glam. Sometimes my dry skin girls can just use like a powder foundation. Have you ever done that instead yeah, of Yeah, I don't like the way it looks. You don't like it? Mm-mm. Yeah, you have to, if you have the dry skin, you have to just do like a super light layer. But it's it's, it's like hit or miss. Like either it's like amazing because mm-hmm. your skin's dry and you don't have a lot of texture and you can do the lightest layer of powder foundation. Or it's like the opposite. Like right. it looks like so dry because it's right. like sucking any moisture that's there off. So I'm not lining her lips because I want this, this is more like a nude, like a warm nude, same thing. That we're doing lip color and if I don't do a liner it looks soft, it looks more natural. If I do a liner it's um, a little bit more polished, a little bit more done up. So we're just keeping it soft. And a lot of times like if you use a brush and apply your lipstick you can get it really precise and have it look like it has a liner underneath it. Sometimes the liner is more just like so it stays all day. Especially cream lipsticks like this, like they're just not gonna stay all day unless you do a liner or something. The liquid lips do, do you ever use those? The liquid lipsticks? Mm-mm, no. They're good, but they, they're super drying. Mm-hmm. Okay, I think we have another question. Pamela says, favorite lipstick color? Okay, that's a good question. I have so many. I have a lot of Max. I'll read you like my go-to. So I did Jubilee on her. Jubilee's, Jubilee's really pretty. It's more of like my lighter neutral. It worked on her. Usually it'll be like my medium neutral for like pale girls. Sometimes when you're tan, it's too light, but it looked pretty on her. I love Spirit. Spirit's super pretty. I did it on my model last week. Those are like my brown tones. And I love Honey Love. That's like the lightest nude. Um, I love Twig, I love Faux, I love Cosmo, Shy Girl, oh, Velvet Teddy's super pretty. Velvet Teddy, it's this one. I depot them, I scrape them all out and put them in here. Velvet t- Teddy is like a brown, but it has like pink in it too. So I feel like it'll work for like my more burgundy, rosy tone eye looks, or it would work on like this too. Like that's a really pretty universal one. And then I like using different, um, different lip liners too. Like if I wanted this lip to be more pink, I would do a pink lip liner, go over the entire lip, put this on, and then it will change the color. Or if I want a more orange, same thing. So I have like a couple lip liners I'll go through and just switch it up that way. So I'm pretty basic, like I don't have a ton of lipsticks, but I'll mix them and I can make pretty much anything. Mary Ellen said, I love watching your channel. It feels like a fun visit with friends. Thank Mm -hmm. you, you're so cute. And Kathy Ann said, you answered my question. Thank you, I'm glad. <laughs> okay, and Mary Ellen said, do you recommend lip liners for older women that have lines around their lips? Yes, I do. Especially if you use the ones like MAC or something that are more, like they have like a pencil, I haven't used this one in forever, I need to sharpen it. Like if they have a pencil base, they'll be more a little more dry, which some people don't like because when you apply it, it's like a little bit, rough like they're not as creamy but they'll last forever like if they have kind of like a drier consistency they'll stay really well because a lot of times like when we get older and we have kind of lines around our lips like your lipstick will travel it'll kind of migrate throughout the day and your lip line will blur a really good long lasting lip liner will help that lime crime they i don't know if they just came out with lip liners or if i just discovered it but this brand these are super good they do like you'll want to hydrate your lips before you put it on. I put on um, like a lip balm. I don't like the chapstick. I'll leave it on for five minutes. I'll dab it off and then I'll go in with this because it is really drying, but this will make my lipstick stay all day. Or you could try liquid lips too, which I was talking to her about. Those, those will stay all day and they will not migrate, but they can be very drying. And if you put on too much like they'll look a little flaky. Like they kind of have a learning curve. Like if you go into Sephora or something and find like an awesome girl, like have her, 
actually don't have her <laughs> try them on you because mm -hmm. Sephora sometimes grosses me out because I think people just <laughs> use the samples like right on their lips. Mm -hmm. So maybe have her tell you which one to buy and then how to use it. And they're really good with their return policy. You can take it back if you don't like it. Okay, let's do, let me show you guys how I blend the lashes. I'm gonna go in with my lash curler. I'm gonna have her just look forward down a little bit. So I'm just gonna press the two lashes together. Does that pinch at all? Nope. Okay. So always before I squeeze, I ask them if it pinches because I definitely don't wanna <laughs> pinch their skin. Yeah, that would be fun. No. And I'm actually squeezing, does that pinch? No. Really gently. It looks aggressive on camera. I always feel like it looks weird. <laughs> but I promise I'm being nice to her. Okay, so when I curl them, you have to do that after the glue is like long dry. Like this glue has been on a while because if it's loose, like you'll lift them up. Actually, usually I'll curl the lashes before, um, especially if they're really straight. Some people's grow like down. Mm -hmm. Hers are pretty average. I feel like yours grow normal. Mm -hmm. But I love my lashes to sit like really upright. I feel like that makes eyes so pretty and like so open. Like it opens them, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I, so you can curl them before, you can curl them after. The reason I usually curl them before is just because I don't have to worry about it disrupting like my connection or whatever, but it's fine if you do. And then once they're curled, I'm gonna go in with my mascara. So even though I did strip lashes on her, I'm still doing mascara because her natural lashes are not black, most people's aren't, like the, like the strips, and so it kind of puts like a wash of lighter color at the base, and I want the base to be really dark. And it's kind of like, not glue, but it, it adheres the natural lashes to the strip. So like we were talking about earlier, like the question about like putting the lashes under under the natural lashes, the reason you want that is because you want them to be together. So this is going to push them together. And you can put, like some people will put like a little tool or a little brush or a little stick or like a card behind their lashes when they're putting on the mascara. That way you can literally like press her lashes into the strips and not get it on her lid if you have that problem. My little sister, she, she's like 22, but she has like literally the most amazing lashes. Like they're crazy long, they're so thick. And so she only has to wear mascara, but she's so funny like how she puts it on. Like she spends forever doing it and she'll press it like into her lid. Like she gets mascara all over Really? Her face. That's so funny. <laughs> Look up for me. So she has to like put her mascara on and then take a Q-tip and clean everything up. So for Christmas, she was like, we draw names of like which siblings we get pre presents for, and she was uh -huh. mine. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna get her so much makeup. Yeah. And I got her like this eye shield. So you hold it on it, it's literally a shield, and you can just. Oh, that's a good her. idea. Did she use it? She didn't. For this was like four years ago, but then this year, she's like, Julie, I finally used your shield, and it's amazing. <laughs> it was like four years later. Right. I don't even still have it. It was from Elf. They're from Target, and I think they're like a dollar. Like, if you have that problem, it's an awesome tool. Yeah, that is. <laughs> if you don't, it's unnecessary. I got it too, and I didn't really like it because I don't, I don't have that problem too much, like only every once in a while. But I've seen makeup artists, like on clients, they'll use like a fan brush because it's a little more classy than like a shield. <laughs> oh, okay, and they'll yeah. stick it behind and kind of okay, do like I've the mascara, that. and that's nice. But I really like to press them together, so I, I don't do that because I can't press on the, the thing. Okay, so now we're going to go back in. Same shadows. I just want to put some warmth under her eyes. I feel like it opens the eyes up and it makes them look bright if you have a little bit of shadow underneath. So usually what I do is I go in with that lightest color, so the soft brown. Look up for me. And I am like so lightly going to buff this in under the eyes. And depending on your eye shape, like I see, see some people pull it down pretty far and it does look pretty. Generally, my flow is to do this before the mascara. Sometimes I switch the order of things that I do it, but ideally you would do it before, but it's fine if you do it after. So this essentially just puts a little shadow under her eyes. And then what I'm gonna go in and do is 
take a little brush if I can find one. Can't find the one I want. We'll use this. This is a pencil brush. I'm gonna go in with, let's do this one. Let's do like a darker brown. I'll show you guys what I do with a darker color. So I'm gonna have her look up. I think this is Ground Brown by MAC. It's very similar to that dark color I did for the Anastasia palette. And I'm literally just like drawing this right into like where a liner would be. I'm essentially creating like a really buffed out line of bottom liner. And I only like to do this on the outside corner. And I want an even skinnier brush. Okay, we'll use another MAC of like a clean angled brush. So same thing, really dense brush, and I am gonna line, draw a line of concealer. Or liner, I'm sorry. So I'm just gonna press this like right into her little lash line, only on like the outer third of her lashes. And you can go on top of the lashes or underneath. Get me add a little more blush. I think we have one more question. Um, Chris asks, what is your opinion on shaving the peach fuzz on your face? It is amazing if you do it. <laughs> I do. do. I do just do it before it? I came over. It's right. Amazing. I didn't know that people did that either. <laughs> yes. Okay, secrets out. <laughs> secrets out. It's amazing. It is super amazing. In fact, after I do her... I feel like it makes your foundation look so much better. Yes. Oh my gosh. So you can get it done by an esthetician, and I, I think it's called dermal cleaning, mm -hmm. and they'll use like a straight razor, and they'll wear surgical gloves, and oh. they literally will, t it takes off all the hair, and it takes off like the top layer of dead skin, and that is amazing. But you also can do it at home. There's like facial razors mm -hmm. that are made for that. Right. I wouldn't use like an actual razor. I would use like a beauty razor. Mm -hmm. I'll show you. I think I have one in my, in my kit somewhere. But yeah, they're amazing. I think I just get them, I either get them at, at Sally's or Amazon. And then you want to go down. So like, you know when you shave your legs or something, you go like opposite of the mm -hmm. hair? You don't do that with the, the beauty razor. So turn to the side. So she doesn't have any because you I don't, it. right? Yeah, yeah, you don't. Nailed it. So you would just turn it at a slight angle, the little razor, and you go gently, gently, gently down your face. And they're kind of dull like they're not going to cut you I mean maybe if you tried you could cut yourself but they're just not that way let me let me try to pull one out put the the front camera on I and mean, I don't feel like I have to get that aggressive with the razor it's yeah you don't because <laughs> they're just little baby hairs like they're not like resisted right. if I can't find it right now I'll link it usually I keep it in my um usually I keep it in my prep bag oh I do I have them okay because sometimes I'll do that for clients. Because mm -hmm. it does. Your foundation just looks better. It so does. These are the two kinds that I have. So this is the one I like for the face. They usually come in a pack of three. And you literally hold it like that. And I just do little strokes. Like, I'll show you on <laughs> my arm. Just like that. I shave my arms. So I don't really have So do I. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I just disinfect them in between clients. I use them. Um, they stay sharp for a while. And then I'll toss it. This one, my little one, I like for eyebrows. Like a lot of times my clients that get threaded or pluck, like we all have like fuzz between our eyebrows. So like this one's smaller, so I'll just go down on their eyebrow. And then I do the above hairs too. I would probably not do that on yourself unless you're really comfortable with shaping brows because you don't ever want to take too much off the top. It's more like the, like a lot of people have like a thick layer of peach fuzz above your brows. So. Hopefully that answered your question. It might have been a very in-depth answer, but mm -hmm. clearly we're very excited about, yeah, oh, about yeah. facial shaving. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. She is all done. Cool. I'm going to show you guys her before picture. Oh, my husband's going to flash it for you guys. So we did do her brows before we started. I used Dip Brow and Blonde, which is actually still, it's, it matches like her root color. All right, and this is the after. She doesn't know what I did, so I'm gonna show her. <laughs> I need to get like a super cute mirror. I only have like this little Sephora one. All right. Ooh, I'm I sure love you. it. Yeah, yeah. You're so pretty. it's really pretty. I love the foundation. Yeah, it looks good. Oh, that looks great. Thank you. you look gorgeous. I love it. Thank you for modeling with yeah, me. Yeah, no problem. You're that was so fun. fun. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you so much for tuning in live. I will be back next Thursday. I have another model lined up for 8 p.m. Pacific time. 
Thanks, guys. Bye.